Hello and welcome to Bells and OC. I'm Manish and in today's video I will be showing you how you can overclock your graphics card. Overclocking your graphics card is safer than overclocking any other component as you, you don't have to play with voltage, you don't have to really set any voltage or anything. We are just going to use the stock voltage, Only uh, we will only be playing with core clock of a graphics card and the memory clock of the graphics card and obviously the power limit. So the first question that comes to our mind is that is it really worth overclocking a graphics card? Well that depends completely upon how much there is a performance gain. Usually I have seen people saying that there is only a uh, like a 2 or 3 FPS performance gain but I have experienced overclocking all my components and graphics card overclocking is something that benefits way more than overclocking any other component. Giving me on average like it, it did increase my FPS from suppose say uh, an increase of about um, somewhere uh, from 10 to 13 FPS on average. Also to keep in mind that once you're overclocking your graphics card, your temperature and your power draw of your graphics card will also raise respectively. With that said, let's get straight into the video. The first thing that you need to download in order to overclock your graphics card is a third party software that's MSI Afterburner. The link will be in the description, click it, download it and be ready to gain that nice juicy boost out of your graphics card so what you see on the screen right now is the msi afterburner and this is going to be the first impression of this software maybe in a different color scheme black white black blue something like that but i have set it to black and red that's my personal preference you can just go into setting and then into interface and change according to your personal preference now apart from that let's uh, come to main settings the first option that you will be going to see is the core voltage which is initially disabled now if you want you can uh, manually go and enable this option but i recommend just leave it like that and just play with the power limit not with the current voltage so the second option that you see here is temperature limit now what it implies is that this is going to be the temperature limit max temperature limit of your graphics card that it will work fine until that point now if it reaches the max limit or above that, what is going to happen is that your graphics card will thermal throttle itself and clog itself down so it can cool down and again after some time clog itself higher. In some of the cases, it will not thermal throttle. If it reaches that point or above, it will just uh, your PC will just shut down to prevent any kind of damage may happen to your graphics card. So now the third option that you see here is power limit and you have to set it manually to the max limit of your graphics card. Now one thing I want to make clear to those people who think or have confusion that if you set this power limit to the maximum, your, power, uh, your graphics card is actually going to draw more power out of your system. That's completely false. Now suppose your graphics card needs 100 watts. And no matter what you're doing, you're gaming or you're doing some rendering work, whatever it is, uh, it needs 100 watts. Now, regardless, you have your uh, power limit to zero or say default or at the max limit, it will draw 100 watt if it needs 100 watt. So don't have any kind of confusion that it might damage your uh, graphics card. It will give more voltage to your graphics card. It is nothing like that. It is just a limit which you um, have to set it to uh, max in order to overclock your graphics card so it can actually draw the power out of your system to run at the higher clock frequencies. Now coming down to the fourth option that's core clock and fifth option that's memory clock. Now we will have to set these clocks to their max stable limit in order to overclock our graphics card. Now I have seen most of the people say that you don't really have to overclock your memory clock but just the core clock and then they say like they only gain about a difference between of a 2 or 3 FPS and it's not worth overclocking your graphics card. Well no, um, you have to overclock your graph uh, memory clock as well because that's uh, memory clock is the clock that gives more out of your system not just the core clock itself. And I actually recommend when you're overclocking graphics card, you should overclock both of them to get the max out of your graphics card. Coming down to the sixth option and the last option that's fan speed. Now fan speed you can just set it manually as you want just like you can just manually just set it to 60%, 70%, 75 as you want according to the temperature of your graphics card. Or you can just go into settings and then fan. And here you will see you can see the graph and you can just manually set a graph and your fan will just run according to the graph you just made for yourself now before we start overclocking i want to download these softwares 
uh, Heaven Superposition and Heaven Valley in order to stress your graphics cards to its knee, which will literally bring out the best of your graphics card. Now, once you download it, we're good to go. Link will be in the description. Go and download it and let's begin. Now, first, you have to put, set the power limit to the max. Once you did it, come down, you will see core clock. Now, you increase the core clock by 20 megahertz per time or just say per stress. So right now you see it's 1268. My core clock is 1268 and I'm using RX 570 here by MSI. It's Armor AGB version. So it's 1268 and I'm going to increase it by 20 megahertz. So from 1268, let's set it to 1288. Uh, click and now let's stress test our GPU. Now, how do you really increase your core clock and memory clock while you're stress testing your GPU? Now, so what some people do is they just increase clock by 20 or 30 megahertz as they want and let the stress test run completely. And once it is completed without any crash or artifacts, then they increase it and then run it again. Well, if you run the whole stress test, it will take time. If you're ready for that, it's completely fine. It's, it's the best way to determine if your graphics card is really stable at that frequency or not. But if you really want to do it quick and get the best result out of it, how I do it is the way that let the stress test run in the background while you have the afterburner on the top of it on the screen. And like right now, uh, we had our uh, core clock at 1268 and we increased it by 20 megahertz to 1288. And now we're just running the stress test for two minutes. If it doesn't show any artifact, if it doesn't crash, then we will increase it to 12 uh, or uh, say like uh, 13 8 well we're going to increase it to 13 8 and let it run for the uh, next two minutes if it doesn't show any artifacts doesn't show any crash then or, or say it doesn't crash it will not show any crash it, if it doesn't crash then we will increase it to uh, 13 28 so it's about the time there is no crash there is no artifact we are ready to add another 20 megahertz to the clock and that will be uh, 1308 megahertz and again we're going to run it uh, for two minutes and let's see So again, there is no crash and there is no artifact or anything that's not supposed to happen. We're ready to add another 20 megahertz to the clock and that will make it 13, 28 megahertz. We will again wait for two minutes and let the graphics card stress for about two minutes. If there's again no artifacts, there is no crash, then we will add another one. So until now, we didn't see any crash. We didn't see any artifact happening. So we are pretty much good to add another 20 megahertz to the core clock. Now this is exactly what you have to do guys repeatedly until you find your stable core clock. Now I will skip rest of the uh, steps like increasing it. I will just uh, jump to the uh, last uh, frequency where it is uh, from last frequency where my graphics card crashes and to show you how it crashes, how it happens and how to get out of it. So now I'm going to set my core clock to 1420 MHz where it crashes and run the stress test.
So as you can see right now that this GPU is crashing at 14 to 20 megahertz and is not stable. If your uh, computer crashes while you're overclocking your GPU, you don't have to do anything. Just wait for a couple of uh, seconds and your screen will turn off and again on you will be on the desktop with a notification that your uh, the uh, display settings have been reverted to the default settings. That means uh, your core clock will be set to your default clock or say your default core clock what it uh, was before you started overclocking initially. So even if I push it further, it's it's just not not in use because it's uh, uh it's crashing at this point. Now what you have to do is you have to pull your core clock back to the last frequency which was stable uh, for your graphics card. So once you're done stress testing your graphics card three times in a row without any crash or any artifact, that means your graphics card is completely stable at that core clock. Now there's one thing. It may not be crashing and stressed out, but may crash while you're playing game. So now go and play your favorite game. Don't worry about the boost right now. You may like, just check like if there's any boost or not. So just go and uh, stress, like play your favorite game and check for the stability. If it's stable, it's been like a couple of hours, like say one, two, three, four hours maybe, I don't know. Uh, you just play it for like three or four hours, that will give you like it is really just stable without any crash. Then move on to memory clock because if you're overclocking both clock at the same time, you will never get to know what is causing the stability issue if there is any stability issue. If you're overclocking both of your core clock and memory clock to the max, you might find a stable position at the stress test but in the game while you're playing and you didn't really check what is a stable core clock and what is a stable memory clock according to your game then if it is crashing you pull down your core clock it is still crashing you pull down your memory clock it is still crashing you will never get to know what is the exact uh, core clock or the memory clock of your gpu so or clock one clock at a time play your game once you completely determine that this clock is completely stable then move on to uh, either of the clock but start with the core clock and then go to the memory clock now moving on to memory clock there's nothing you have to do you just have to repeat the same process that you did for your core clock um, maybe just increasing your memory clock by 40 megahertz every time you stress it now once you find your stable a memory clock with a stress test just go and enjoy your game once your game are it's stable without any crashes without any lags without any stutter or fps drops anything like that or any artifact your game your sorry your graphics card is completely stable and if somehow it is crashing you know now that recently you changed the memory clock and it is crashing just pull on a memory clock and enjoy your game so this is exactly how you overclock your graphics card it was easy and it's safe you don't have to worry about anything i don't take the guarantee that's one thing but it is safe and don't worry about it it's easy it's super easy like graphics card overclocking is actually easy than any of your other uh, components such as uh, CPU overclocking or RAM. So go and enjoy your favorite game with the nice boost you just gained out of your component. And I hope you like it. Please do subscribe if you like this video and like if you like this video and hit that bell icon to get the notification every time I upload a video. And please support us and we will be bringing out cool and nice content, helping you guys with everything possible we can. Um, See you guys.